I'm going to outrage some people here and defend the mainstream. While I'm carnivore, and I probably always will be, there are some arguments from the other side that we should take seriously. So where am I coming from? I've been on the carnivore diet now for about 27 months. When I first started the carnivore diet, I was pre-diabetic and I was an alcoholic. I'm now alcohol-free. I'm no longer pre-diabetic. I no longer have arthritis. I no longer carry excess weight. I've got more energy. I sleep better. So many things have improved for me. So given what I've just said, why would anyone not want to be carnivore? Well, I think there are good reasons to go carnivore. But again, the other side does have some good arguments that we should take seriously. And I found an article that I want to go through with you today that describes some of those. Okay, so this article is from WebMD, and it's carnivore diet information. What is the carnivore diet? How do you do it? What are the pros and cons? That kind of thing. Now, for our purposes today, I want to go down to the cons list because they point out some really important stuff here. So let's go and have a look at the cons. Does the carnivore diet work? Carnivore diet meal plans, takeaways. Oh, hang on. I've gone past it. Here we go. Pros and cons of the carnivore diet. Okay, so we know about the benefits, you know, more energy, better sleep, more strength through endurance, lower BMI, that kind of thing. All right, the side effects. Now, um, the first one they talk about is the carnivore diet doesn't align with the dietary guidelines for Americans which recommends that adults get 45% to 65% of their daily calories from carbohydrates. And this is right. It doesn't align with the dietary guidelines that most of your um, calories come from carbohydrate. That's very true. They make a good point here. I think the thing that they're missing here is 45 to 65% of the population is overweight or obese and well on their way to being full-blown diabetic. But we'll leave that issue to the side for the moment. They have raised an important point there. Okay, so by cutting entire food groups, this diet could leave you short on important vitamins and minerals. For example, vegetables are sources of fiber, potassium, vitamins A and C, and folate. A lot of those things you will find in red meat. But this is where I say they make a lot of good arguments that we should pay attention to from time to time. For example, regarding fiber, you're probably not going to get much fiber from red meat. So when you're at that barbecue and you're eating that steak, you're not going to get fiber out of that unless, of course, the person that prepared it has put it on a paper plate and you accidentally eat the paper plate along with the steak. Anyway, let's continue. So not getting enough fiber in your diet could cause constipation. Another very good point. And I know personally, as a previous alcohol abuser, if you want to get wine out of the bottle as quickly as possible, you leave the cork in. That's exactly how you should do it. Eat the fiber, leave that cork in there. All right. so. Interestingly, people who have tried this diet reported the opposite side effect, diarrhea. Okay, so a high-fat, high-protein diet may cause loose poop because it changes the balance of good and ba bad bacteria in the gut. People who eat this way also complain of headaches, nausea, and a lack of energy. Very good point again. Just a little bit of information missing there. It probably lasts about a week to two weeks. But very good point. You see, we have to sometimes acknowledge the mainstream gets it right. Okay, so uh, animal-based diets are high in saturated fat. No shit, Sherlock, which can raise low-density lipoprotein, LDL cholesterol. That's the unhealthy kind of cholesterol. No, it's not. It's a lipoprotein. Cholesterol is cholesterol. Okay, so importantly, what our expert says. Let's have a look here. So while this diet can probably help you lose weight, you see, you've got to, you've got to acknowledge they're correct. It can also lead to nutrient deficiencies and is not sustainable, says Kathleen Zellman, MPH, a registered dietitian nutritionist. 
you just can't stay on it very long. Why is that, Kathleen? The carnivore diet is too restrictive and too boring to follow long term. Another very good point that it brings up here that we do need to acknowledge, and thank you very much, Kathleen. Good job. You know, it is too restrictive and too boring, and it's going to be too hard to stick to. Because when you think about it, what are you going to do without all the color, without all the crunch, without all the umbrellas and cherries and all the chemicals? What are you going to do if you can't consume chemicals by the truckload and artificial colors by the truckload every week? What are you going to do? You're going to be sleeping better? Who wants that? You're going to be feeling better? Right. You're going to be thinking more clearly. Who wants to look out at the world the way it is and think clearly about it and actually see it as it is? Not me. You're going to be losing weight. Who wants to do that? You're going to stand out like dog's balls if you lose weight. You might end up getting off your medications. You might not have to have neuropathy anymore. You might not have to have eye problems anymore. You might not have type 2 diabetes anymore. All these things could change. Why would you want that when you have to give up the color, the preservatives, the chemicals, the crunchiness, the crisp packet opening sounds? That It's just insane that people would think that this is something that you can do long term. So again, good job, Kathleen. Well said. Eventually, food cravings are going to kick in. Of course, of course they will. Why would they not? Like, it's not like you're going to be eating food that will satiate you and make you think about things other than food, right? You can't not think about food right now. So what is changing the way you're eating going to do about that? absolutely nothing. Um, you're going to want a sandwich, right? You're going to want a piece of whole grain bread, and you're going to want to have some cereal, some fruit or salad. Very good points, Kathleen. Guys, thanks for watching this tongue-in-cheek video. Watch this video next.